For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine only one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. I told you. <laughs> At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go, amen, uh, to uh, Scripture Con uh, Corinthians, please. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 12, 2. Appreciate you coming and visiting. Uh, I mean, that is cold out there. <laughs> Amen. Second Corinthians. Love God. Twelve two. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth, such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy and your love, Lord. God, we just pray here this evening that you would have free course. God, Lord, speak through this vessel, Lord God. We did not come to hear from man or to see a man, but God, we come to hear from the living God. Lord, you said in this last day, our Father, that you would speak to us, O oh God, and you gave us the, 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 the ability, Lord, to unveil you, Lord. And Father, we thank you right now for your amazing grace, and we pray, Father, that you bless everyone here this evening, break and destroy every yoke of the enemy, deliver us from all manner of, of things, and whatever we need, Father, you said if we should call upon you Lord, we would receive if we believe. And this evening we believe, Father. We thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> By the grace of God, we showed how that the Roman seal has always tried to keep Jesus down, locked in. We showed you by the grace of God how that you know, spiritually, that is what Satan is doing. Not just among the uh, nominal churches, but I find out that even among the message churches, people are getting so cold and starchy and stiff. And uh, we find out that they don't understand that that is a spirit that God is not pleased with. It is a spirit of antichrist. And so, therefore, amen, you must fight. Amen. The Bible tells us that we must contend for the faith. That's not just for the word only, but the spirit of the word. Amen. Because we realize, amen, that we, being the female or the woman part of Christ, you and I must produce children. And you must, and the only way that you can produce word children, it must be under the, the atmosphere, amen, of the word. Is that right? Amen. We realize, amen, this morning that it can't be lukewarm. Amen, because God said it must be a temperature that is hot. Y'all have heard my testimony before. Amen, there was a time I preached on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen, and my young daughter was, I think she was about seven years old, and she said to me, Daddy, she said, I know why God came down in, into the fiery furnace. I said, how come, honey? He said, because, amen, it, you know, it, they heated, heated it up seven times harder, and that was the place he could be comfortable in. So I hope by the grace of God we can get it all hot tonight. Amen. To the Holy Spirit can come down and be comfortable in service. Is that all right? So we realize, amen, by the grace of God, amen, as I said earlier, amen, the only way that we know to uh, fight uh, this spirit, we must contend for the faith. We must allow the world to know, amen, that we are alive. 
We can't allow the Roman stone to stay over the tomb. Y'all understand what I mean? Amen. We must break out as he break in. Amen. So we realize by the grace of God, amen, that this, Brother Branham said, the true Easter seal, amen, is the Holy Ghost. And we find out that so many people don't even know what the Holy Ghost is. But I thank God by the grace of God we know what he is and who he is this, this evening. Amen. So we realize, amen, that as he said in the true Easter seal message, the genuine uh, Easter, true Easter seal shows that sin has been paid for, for you, and God has accepted you. Amen. 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 And you're sealed into Christ by the Holy Ghost, and therefore sin is finished. Amen. Amen. Is that all right? There was a question asked him, amen, in uh, question and answers. Amen. How could a man live above or live so close to God he would be without sin? His, his, and Brother Brown goes on and said, his love did it. His love said, uh, 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 love paid for our sins. His love uh, taken it away. Love is the most powerful force there is. Okay. And he used that scripture, Ephesians 1, 4, according as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. Come on, somebody. Holy and without blame, amen, before him in love. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to be happy tonight, this evening. Amen. To understand that because of his love, he presents us to himself. Hallelujah. You've heard me say many times, there was only one accepted. Hallelujah. And that was Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. Moses wasn't accepted. Elijah wasn't accepted. Hallelujah, Noah wasn't accepted. Amen. Hallelujah, the only way we ever would be accepted is in the beloved, which is Jesus Christ himself. Is that right? When the seals were opened, the Bible said no man, amen, was found worthy. Hallelujah. But because we were found in him, we're worthy because he's worthy. Every victory he won, we won. Every glorified thing he did, we did. Hallelujah. Why? Because we were in him. Hallelujah. The prophet God said you can live so close to God, God will take you places. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I like that. That we can live so close to God that God will take us places. Hallelujah. Amen. You say, well, brother, I don't know about that. But Paul lived so close to God. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, 2, I don't know a man in Christ about 14 years ago. He said, I was caught up. He said, I was caught up into the third heaven. Hallelujah. I heard things that wasn't even lawful. Amen. For a man to utter. Hallelujah. He was the alpha, but here come the omega. Hallelujah. He said, one day I was laying on my bed. Hallelujah. And I was thinking, hallelujah, I don't have much time left. Come on, somebody. He said, all of a sudden, he said, all of a sudden, he said, I looked around, and here was my body laying on the bed. What was it? He lived so close to God, God took him places. Hallelujah. Took him beyond the curtain of time. And he said, I saw millions, millions coming toward me. As I said, if you don't know you're one of those millions, Something's wrong with your experience. If you can, your faith cannot place you there, something's wrong with your experience. I believe with all of my heart, I'm one in a million. You must believe that you're one in a million. And therefore, amen, if you're living close to God. Now, I know you might sound a little fanatical, but I heard a, a brother preach one time. Y'all remember Joseph? Joseph Hammett came and he preached. Amen. And he said, the last battle has not been fought yet. He showed us, amen, how we were riding. Jesus was coming in on the white horse, and he had all of his followers. I know you might not believe this, but it's true anyhow. I saw Jesus ride, hallelujah, in the front, amen, like a pyramid, hallelujah, with all of the saints of God falling behind him. And all of a sudden, something zeroed in, zoomed me in, hallelujah. I saw myself, ha, 
Glory to God. Riding on a white horse. Hallelujah. Nobody can take it from me. I've seen it with my own eyes. Hallelujah. Right there. God took my mind and took me there. Help me, Lord. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Easter. I'm talking about a resurrection. Because of this resurrection, he went down to hell, like I said this morning, for you and I. Hallelujah. But he also ascended, amen, up into heaven for you and I. Come on, somebody. He was the first one that ever went to where he went. Hallelujah. Everybody else had to stay under the altar. Hallelujah. But he passed the altar and went to the throne of God. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. And you and I must understand he had to go that high because he's going to take us that high. Woo, is that right? He said, for those that overcome in this age, I will grant with you, hallelujah, to sit in my throne, even as I have sat in my father's throne. Hallelujah. We won't be just anywhere when we overcome this thing. Hallelujah. We'll be in the throne of God. Woo. Come on, somebody. He says in true Easter seal, he said, we are sealed in the body of Christ, eternally sealed, not a seal for a space of time, but for eternity. And now that person that received that is raised from the dead, from life of sin. What is it? His spirit has been raised. His ambitions are raised. His life has been raised. He is a new creature. Oh, glory to God. And he comes together with fellow citizens like we are this evening to pray for one another and to help one another and to encourage one another and set and gather in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, sealed by the Holy Ghost. For we are dead and your sin is hid in Christ through God, sealed by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Your sins are hid in Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Sealed by the Easter seal, sealed uh, of, of a resurrection, which confirmed, which confirmed that his life and what he had said was true. Now, you must understand, and we all must understand, we did not come here to play church. We came here to declare that Jesus Christ is alive and well. He is not dead. But he's alive. Hallelujah. He's greater than music. Hallelujah. He's greater than a choir. Hallelujah. He's greater than shouting or dancing. Hallelujah. He is the literal life of God. Hallelujah. And God has declared in this last day there'll be a bride that'll be so much like her. Him, he'll pull, we'll pull him out of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to start pulling. Huh? Glory to God. But how do you pull? By the life that you live. Ephesians 1 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings, huh? In heavenly places in Christ. Not some of them, all. Amen. Is that all right? Not some of the blessings, but all. What you talk? All of his blessings are mine. Hallelujah. And the Bible said. <laughs> And he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That means if I'm sitting here, amen, in heavenly places, I'm sitting there in heavenly places. Is that what the prophet said? He said, whatsoever you do here is what you're doing there. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I told you by the grace of God, amen, God can work with your mind. Hallelujah. If you let the mind of Christ be in you, hallelujah, amen, you become him and he becomes you. Huh? Is that all right? Hallelujah, glory to his name. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You say, what are you talking about, Brother Bush? That's what I was talk, trying to tell you this morning. The only laboring that you must, you and I must do is to labor into his rest. Amen, according to Hebrew, you labor into his rest. But once you get in there, you rest. <laughs> Hallelujah, is that all right? You rest, hallelujah, in Christ. Hallelujah, here we are struggling. Oh, Lord, am I going to make it? Oh, Lord, it's so hard. Oh, Lord, what you need to do is some laboring. Amen, you need to get some laboring. You need to get down on your knees and say, Lord Jesus, I need to enter into your rest. 
Hallelujah. It's not a time to be. It's time now to, 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 to rest in God and let God finish the work in you. Is that all right? Do we have to worry about this thing? No worries. No worries. Like I told you, all you got to do is listen to the slang of the world and you'll understand what God is trying to tell you. I know twist it back right up and you'll know we don't bundle. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. You understand that? There's time for a change. Hallelujah. Amen. And in the bride of Christ, there are no worries. Hallelujah. You know, the thing about it is, and I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. The thing about it is, amen, we come to a place where, like Job said, for the things which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Let me put it this way. If you fear you're going to miss the rapture, you will miss the rapture. Come on, somebody. you got to have faith to believe you're going to make the rapture. Hallelujah. Amen. The prophet of God said, if you fear, he said, what you need to do is adopt a baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to adopt a baby. And that baby needs to be the Holy Ghost. You need to claim it. Hallelujah. Say, I got it. Hallelujah. you got to nourish it by the grace of God. He said, that's how it is. He said, 99% of the time, he said, when a woman, amen, can't have a baby, he, he said, it's proven. That once she uh, adopts a baby, she soon get relaxed. All of the attention, all the tension leaves her, and then she soon can have her own baby. Hallelujah. The problem is you're too tense to get it. Hallelujah. You don't have to be tense to get the Holy Ghost. You just got to have faith you're going to get it. Hallelujah. You can't say, you can't go before God, amen, bringing to God, amen. Oh, Lord, look what I've done. You know, God, I've done. Listen, when you get the Holy Ghost, listen. Your, your confession is on the outer court. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. You confess all your sins right there justified. Hallelujah. To get sanctified, you start saying, God, cleanse this, cleanse this, cleanse this. But when it comes to the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, you got to start glorifying God. Amen. That's a different perfume right there. <laughs> a different perfume. You got to start glorifying God. Amen. And telling God how much you love him. Now, what do you mean, Brother Bruce? You've got to start working with God like he worked with you. You know, I know sometimes people don't understand, but that's why so many people haven't got beyond the curtain, of, uh, the, the, the veil of God, it's because they're just in sackcloth and ashes, and you can't go before the king with sackcloth and ashes. You've got to come before him with the garment that he like. Come on, Elsa. Elsa can tell you about it. you got to put on the king's garment, what he likes, hallelujah. And you got to come in there with a the garment of praise, with a garment of thanksgiving, hallelujah, with a sweet smelling, hallelujah. You can't come before the king with a honey-do list. Hallelujah. you got to come back, come with the king and say, oh, king, like Esther did, I don't care if you give me a half of the kingdom, a third of the kingdom, what the kingdom would be without you. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. And when you start glorifying, I'm telling you what, I'm not, what I know. Amen. you got to say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for making me bride. Thank you for washing me in your blood. Thank you for choosing me. Lord, you did a, you did a wonderful job. Woo! Glory to his name. You've done a wonderful job. Hallelujah. He's vindicating it, isn't he? Hallelujah. You've done a wonderful job. Hallelujah. How perfect was Calvary. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Nobody could love me like you love me. See, you, that's how you got to talk to him. Hallelujah. You want to get his attention, you got to talk to him in the right way. Hallelujah. When you talk to him the right way, he'll come down and he'll sup with you. Hallelujah. See, that's what the denomination don't understand. They still begging God. You don't beg God. You love him. Hallelujah. You love him into it. Hallelujah. And when you give God love because he loves, he loves you back. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to his name. Oh, my people, this is the time for change. Hallelujah. Did you know that? Because of his death, burial, and resurrection, we can change. Hallelujah. Thousands of years, and man couldn't change. All he could do was adopt religion. Hallelujah. But he couldn't change. Hallelujah. The na lamb nature couldn't come back on him until the true lamb of God came down. Hallelujah. 
Oh, my, but that true lamb of God wasn't bringing you to a place of reformation. But this true lamb of God was bringing you to a transformation. Hallelujah. And when the blood of Jesus dropped, like I said this morning, one drop of blood. That's all it takes is one drop of blood. Amen. And God comes down. Amen. And fills you with the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Think about it. That one drop of blood can change and transform you, amen, from a sinner to a saint. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Amen. We all were Gentile dogs. Hallelujah. But now God done made us prince and princess. Hallelujah. Kings and kings. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. How can he do it? I don't know how he did it, but he did it. <laughs> amen. What y'all needed some Beethoven in you. <laughs> What we need is some Beethoven. I don't mean that Beethoven. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Because if the Holy Ghost is in you, you'll do just like the Holy Ghost will do. Oh, I don't know what, about you, but I'm feeling pretty good. And actually, this pulpit is in my way. But I've got to stay behind here right now. Amen. We come to Christ. First thing we do, amen, he said, listen, we get justified by believing on him. And when we do that, then we realize that we've done wrong. We ask God to sanctify us. That cleanses us from our life of sin. Amen. Martin Luther, justification is message. Then come west with sanctification. And then when it is all complete and his church is completed, what's the next thing? A finished work. A finished work is the seal. And that's the church has been completed. Like the pyramid noticed in a dollar bill. I reference to it. I don't know whether I've ever did it here at the tabernacle or not. But you notice on the dollar bill, it's called the great seal. Now, how could you say that the United States could recognize that other? In Egypt, they have the great seal. And here the seal of the United States uh, uh, on the other side. Is that right? A great eagle. But listen, amen, we look at this thing and you say, oh, my God, what's going on with me? I'm having such a rough time. I thank God for the hard times. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Because he's working on me. He's seeing things in me that he needs to get out of. Hallelujah. He's the master builder. I'm just a I'm just a potter. Hallelujah. I'm just a clay. Hallelujah. He's a potter. Amen. So he's working on me and he's working on you. But the key to this key, the key to your success is to keep your mouth shut. Don't murmur, don't complain. Hallelujah. Bible said in all things give thanks unto God. In all things give thanks. I don't care if you're going to Calvary. Give thanks to God. When you give thanks, God say, that's my kind. <laughs> Hallelujah. He knows you got a lamb's nature then. Hallelujah. The Bible said he was led to the slaughter. Amen. And he opened not his mouth. Hallelujah. He was a, he was, is that right? The Bible said he was dumb before his shears. Hallelujah. He let him, he let him shave him. He let him whip them, him. He let him do everything they could to him. And he wouldn't open his mouth. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. It wasn't strangers that was doing these things. It was people from his own household. The Bible said he came to his own and his own receiving him not. Amen. But he came to those who would not, those who did not, those who knew not. Amen. But for those who would, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Think about it. You better thank God. These wild olive branches we used to be. Hallelujah. God done grafted us into the real vine. Mm. He said, if you abide the vine, the vine, and you and I abide, and you, is that right? He said, you'll bring forth by the grace of God. Now, listen, you think about this. Here it was, God comes along, and, and he's working with Abraham according to Genesis, the 17th chapter. And I'm not going to go through the whole story, but you know how it was. Abraham was called by God. Amen. And here was Abraham, amen, just like we were. Uh, like we, we are, amen, among uh, uh, Gentile people, amen, that all they were were idolaters. And, and, and you know what they were like? They, you can tell by the way it is now. Amen. But God called Abraham. Now, how did Abraham know that was God? With all those gods, amen, how did Abraham know God was God? How do you know Jesus Christ is God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. There have been people hearing that name for thousands of years, and they still don't know he's God. Amen. Woo, 
Come on, somebody. You better thank God for election. Hallelujah. The only way you can hear God's voice is because you was elected. Hallelujah. Predestinated before the foundation of the world. And Jesus said, my sheep heareth my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. That is the only way you know. That's the only reason you know that Jesus Christ is God. There's a lot of things to thank God for. Oh, somebody, you better think. I tell you what, people say, well, I got the Holy Ghost. You know what I thank God for? Most of all, election. Is that right? Brother Branham said election is greater than the Holy Ghost or having the Holy Ghost. You understand? There's a lot of people that got the Holy Ghost, but they're not, they're not elected. Hallelujah to be the bride of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And I'm so thankful, hallelujah, that God not only elected me, chose me, hallelujah, to receive the Holy Ghost for my day. Hallelujah, but he called me, amen, and chose me, amen, to do what? Be translated. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. Translated. Hmm. Translated. Think about it. Woo. This old mortal will put on immortality. Why? Because of Calvary. Hallelujah. It's home going time. We couldn't even return home until he did that. Hallelujah. Somebody had to die for us. Hallelujah. And pay our debt in order for us to return home. We would have been stuck. Hallelujah. But somebody paid the ticket, hallelujah. Somebody made the way for us to return. Woo, Jesus, have mercy, have mercy. You see, that's how God is with us. He's good to us. He's better to us than we to ourselves. Hallelujah. Think about it. And here he comes to Abraham and all of us. We've, we've, we've passed through this phase, I hope. Amen. When he told Abraham, said, you know, I'm going to bring forth a child out of your loins. Amen. I love this. I love this. Amen. And we find out that Abraham was concerned. Said, Lord, he said, all I got here in my, in my house is my servant Eliezer. Is it from him? He says, no, 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 no. He said, the, the, this got to come out of your bowels. Oh, my God. When I saw that, I thought, Lord, that's right. I said, you know, I said, we, the only way we can be inherit Christ, we had to come out of his bowels. Yeah, come on, somebody. Abraham was a type of the father. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaac was a son. Hallelujah. And Isaac had to come out of the loins. He had to come out of the bowels. Like the prophet God said, we are rotating off of him. Oh, my God. We're not just a piece, just something outside of something God picked off the shelf. But he said, we are rotating off of God. Whew. You can't get it no better than that. Hallelujah. And then God comes along and he says, look at Abraham. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bring him out of your bowels. You know how Sarah got him to make uh, Ishmael, you know, do that. And, and, but God said, that still don't satisfy me. It's got to be not under the right seed, but the right ground. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> it's got to be the right ground. <laughs> hey, amen. So we find out by the grace of God, she laughed. She doubted. Right? Me, an old woman. How can this be? Come on. Look how long the church has been going on. Thousands of years now. We the old church. How can we how can this a, a new revival come? How can it happen? How can how can this thing be formed in us? We old now. We passed those years, huh? Come on, somebody. Oh, re understand, amen, Pentecost, amen. This Azuzu Street thing was really a great thing, but it wasn't the fullness of it, folks. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. It wasn't the fullness of it, amen. The person Jesus Christ had to come down. Amen. Hallelujah. And he did it in this hour, in this day. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you and I must realize by the grace of God what God is doing. He's changing you. Right now, as you listen to the word of God, he's changing you from glory to glory to glory to glory. Oh, my. Is that not right? Brother Adam said, you'll never come to a church meeting and leave the same. You either leave worse or you leave better. You make the choice. I'm getting better all the time. He comes along, and, and he said at that time, when he, when he turned his back to the tent, and he said, why did Sarah laugh? She said, I didn't. He said, at that time, he said, God would have killed her, but he couldn't kill her because she was part of Abraham. Ooh, come on, somebody. 
Amen. So we find out by the grace of God that because she couldn't, she was, that's why God didn't have him slave you. Because you are part of him. He cannot deny himself. You say, well, brother, I might not be the most spiritual as one. Amen. Neither was Thomas. Neither was Thomas. Hallelujah. But God came to Thomas and said, Thomas, thrust your hand into my side. Fill out the prints, hallelujah. If God got to bring you to a place where you got to feel, taste, smell, and see it so that you will become a believer, he will do it. He said, blessed be you, Thomas. Amen, because you say I'm God. You've seen me. But blessed is the man who haven't seen and yet believe. Hallelujah. I wasn't there when William Branham was on the scene. Oh, I got to go. Oh, I, I should have wrote that down, but I, I'm gonna, I'll just use it later. Let me say it like this by the grace of God, but I tell you what, I believe everything. Ooh. Come on. Come on. Is that all right? But when he did that, he said, if that was the last sign before the promised son. When he said he deserved the intent, he turned his back. And you know how the father of God turned his back to the other side, calling out names. Y'all remember that? He said that was the last sign that was Elohim on the scene. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was Elohim on the scene. And when he come, amen, what was he doing? He was brewing. He was brewing and bringing his bride to a place where she could recognize him. Hallelujah. Oh, God, people, look what God has done for us. Hallelujah. Amen. And what was it? It was a time for the change. While the world is groping in darkness, hallelujah, when they are confusing, confused, guess what Abraham's seed is saying? I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> I'm going to have a baby. It's been a long time. I don't care how you know because God says so. <laughs> hallelujah. I don't have to wrestle with that. He said it. And not one of his words would come back void. Hallelujah. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, well, brother, maybe I'm not walking like this. I should the Bible said, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. God ain't God. You can't flatter God. You can't flatter him. Hallelujah. It, he, he chose to do what he wanted to do for you. Not yesterday, before the foundation of the world. Oh, my now, amen, coming across this place. Now, I, I still got, I still, I'm still, I'm still, you know, I'm still full because, you know, he's presenting me blameless. He's, he's presenting you blameless. That means without fault, you know, no sin. Uh, why? Because he loved you so. Oh, uh, because I, I fasted 40 days. No, sir, because he loved you so. It's not your works. It's what he has already done for you. And if we can move into that channel, hallelujah, we'll become an invincible army. That's what he's wooing us to. Wake up, Samson. Real like recognize your day in this message. Amen. Is that right? Brother Brandon said every age met their criteria. Every age fulfilled the promise for their day. And this bride must fulfill the promise of her day. Hallelujah, it's not a law, it's not good enough to be the word. You must be anointed, hallelujah. You must have the quickening power, hallelujah, to bring that thing to pass, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Ooh. Oh, my, is that right? Glory to God. Yeah, he said she, she couldn't hardly believe it. She just laughed with her, within herself. Amen. She was 100 years old. He failed to be with her and Abraham as a husband and wife. You understand what I mean? Family relationship probably 20 years before. Why? They were dead in, the man, in that manner. Abraham is good as uh, dead. Sarah's womb is good as dead. But what happened? What taken place? She said, how could I be as old as I am? And my Lord, we haven't, we've ceased the way. Be, uh, we've been that sheets from that way for many years, many years. It's impossible for him. It's impossible for me. How can I do? How can I do it? And she laughed in herself, and the angel said, why did she laugh? Why did she think within herself, in her heart? Why did she say this? Now watch. That, excuse me. Excuse me. That, that was 
was the last sign before something happened to Sarah and Abraham. Woo! Now I preached here one time and told you that God turned them back to a young man and woman to prove it. She went down. They took a little trip, went down to Gerea and Abimelech. That Philistine king fell in love with Sarah and wanted to marry her. Come on, somebody. Amen, amen, amen. And, of course, she was a young woman, again, beautiful. And notice he had to do something. He had to change her. He didn't just put her back to a young man and woman. See, that's what we must understand. God is not coming just to turn you back young, but he must change you from the inside out. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The change must come from the inside out first. Hallelujah. Before the outside change. Is that right? But that's what he's doing in the secret chambers of God. He's turning that bride inside out, changing her. Amen. That's why. That's why I always tell you the secret of the rapture is in prayer. Hallelujah. The secret of the rapture is in prayer. You don't pray, you won't stay. Hallelujah. And you must understand by the grace of God, amen, that if you stay in that prayer closet, hallelujah, God will tell you things, hallelujah, that he won't even give it to the preacher if he ain't praying. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. She's going to know things that a lot of people won't know, and he's going to tell her things that don't tell nobody else. Hey, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, Amen. Is that all right? Hmm. It's the secret of it. Hey, Amen. Is that right? Because of, uh, they, they, Brother Adam said that when the foolish virgin came, hey, Amen, for all what did the wise tell them? You go pray up. Amen. You go right. pray up. And I, I, that always hold to me. Amen. That's why the devil fights you so hard in prayer. Didn't God say that if you pray with him in secret, he will ward you openly? Hello, somebody. Oh, glory to God. My. Mm. Is that right? He caught them, right? He changed them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. But he had to change their whole system and turn them back young and change them to receive the sign. The same thing he's going to do next after that. And remember, after the sign was manifested fully to Abraham and his group, and let me ask you the question. Have the sign been fully manifested? Amen. Right? Because you've got to remember, I said this last week or uh, whenever I was here last, I said, here it was. Amen. Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. The prophet of God said that was a time for, for teaching them. Hallelujah. Amen. Many, we've, we, in, in this message, amen, we've had the devil attack us by false doctrines everywhere. Hallelujah, but when he saw that wasn't going to work, he attacked the blood, blood, blooded, bleeding word. Hallelujah. He comes around and he attacks that. And then, you know, that's when the 70 left. I, I got to say this. What is taking place right now among what we call the message has been for the bride of Jesus Christ alone because it anchors her. It anchors her. Because Jesus turns to Peter and said, are you going to leave too? She said, where can I go? I can't go to Benny Hinn. <laughs> Excuse me, I can't, go. <laughs> I can't go nowhere else. You're the only one that has the words to eternal life. Do you really? I want you to think about what that did to him. What that confession was. It anchored him. Even though, amen, he denied him, he knew within himself that he was the only one that had the words to eternal life. And though the 70 left, it separated the wheat from the chaff. Come on, somebody. Amen. It brought us into a place. Now you know your wheat because you can't go nowhere. You can't go nowhere. There is no other message outside of this. And that same group he took, amen, to the upper room. Amen. Right? One tried to make it, but he couldn't because he didn't believe in the Holy Ghost. Hey, somebody.
somebody. Come on, somebody. He did it. He said Judas couldn't go to Pentecost. I'm almost done. St. John 14, please. You love the Lord? I had, I've had so many friends that I have to say this again. Turn around on me, you know? Not on me, on God. Oh, they don't believe this, they don't believe that. But I let them know y'all didn't show me this in the beginning. <laughs> God showed me this. Hmm? And my question is, if this is wrong, then how come the world is the way it is? And the world prophesied, God prophesied of it thousands of years before this happened. It can't be a coincidence. Hmm? The world is the way it is because the word said it would be so. You are who you are because the word said it would be so. Oh, somebody ought to be happy tonight. St. <clears throat> John 14, 10. I'm so glad to be sitting in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Think about it. Look at all these stones. Every one of us are cut differently. Hallelujah. But right now we're fitting together. Hallelujah. Amen. How do you know? Because we amen and hallelujah. <laughs> hey, Lord, fit it together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Saying amen to the word. The devil don't like that, you know. I'm glad he don't. Amen. I got you where, St. John? 14? 10. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. St. John 14, 10. That's Want to make sure I'm in the right spot. Yep. Believe it thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. That is where God is trying to bring us in, up into our lives. Now, the Bible, according to John, said, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, you are anti-Christ. Not talking about Jesus 2,000 years ago. He's talking about Jesus now. Jesus Christ has come into your flesh. And if Jesus Christ has come into your flesh, then who's living? Who's living? Who's living? Who's living? Who's living? That's why Paul said, it's not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Amen. Yet in a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye shall see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. <laughs> in other words, I'm your life source. That's the only reason why you're living. Is that all right? Amen, amen. Listen, in closing, because I can't finish it all. We got communion. But I want to say this by the grace of God. Jesus Christ had no place to be born, and he had no place to die, and no place to be buried. Everything was borrowed. <laughs> a borrowed cave, a borrowed tomb. Hallelujah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He had no house. Everything was borrowed. <laughs> Amen. So don't feel so bad if you got a little something. <laughs> Amen. He didn't have nothing. Is that right? He had nothing. Amen. But one thing he had in mind, which was above all things, Eden meant nothing to him without his wife. Hmm? The whole purpose, remember the prophet God said, he said there was only one thing that Jesus Christ asked the Father, and that was, Father, I would that they be with me. Mmm, that, 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 now that's like David said, that's honey in the cone. <laughs> I can taste that word right now. Amen, because that's all it is. He, he, nothing else mattered. He died for you and me, right? Like Adam, he died for Eve. Nothing, nothing else mattered, how beautiful it was, how the sun set, the sun rise. None of that mattered to him. His fallen bride was what he wanted. His fallen bride is what he got. Hallelujah. So is it with Jesus Christ. Heaven, earth, nothing matters to him. His fallen bride was what he wanted. His fallen bride is what he's got. And you better believe this. 
Nothing can take you away from him. Paul said, what shall separate? Not even, I'm sorry. He said, who shall separate me from the love of God? Who, who, who? Nothing can. Who? Nothing, nothing. The devil mad because he can't stop this thing. <laughs> He's so upset. He can't stop it. No matter he done tried to boil it out of us, burn it out of us, cut it out of us. Amen. But one of these old days, he'll come after us. And like you said, we'll be caught up. Caught up, people. And I believe we're not too far from that right now. When you see the things changing the way they're changing so rapidly. My, 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 my. And here you are thinking, oh, God, ain't nothing happening in me. Like I said, and I'll say it again. Can anybody see a tree growing? Anybody knows that? Can you, you ever seen a tree grow? You can look right at it, and it's growing, and you can't even see it. They have to put it under speed cameras for you to really see the thing growing. But it's growing. You're looking right at it and can't even see it growing. Come on, somebody. We look at ourselves every day and can't see, it, see ourselves growing. We either growing up or out. <laughs> That's the truth, and you don't even see it, but it's happening. Just like the inner man, he's growing. He's growing, people. He's growing. Hallelujah. And one of these old days, he's going to show up. And you're going to see all this time, all that suffering, all that pain, all that, that trials I had to go through, and all it was was Jesus forming himself in you. Mm hmm forming himself in you all the time. After a while, you start talking like him, walking like him, looking like him, acting like him. Now I'm going to bring it down to another scenario, and I'm going to close. Now, like I said last week, many times we don't, we, 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 we're born of our mothers and our fathers as little children. People say, oh, you look just like your daddy. Well, you don't see that. Hmm? Or your mama said, well, I sure hope you don't be like your no good daddy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just I'm being honest. Being honest. Y'all know I done heard that before. <laughs> and you say, well, I'm not going to be like him. But what you don't understand is that you are born of him. Without the Holy Ghost, you're going to bear his image. Whether you like it or not. Right? Amen. I look in the mirror sometimes. I throw my hat on just like my daddy. The other day, I found myself walking like it was some way I was doing. I could see my daddy. You hear what I'm saying? I didn't have to practice it. Yeah, I didn't have to go into meditation. No, I didn't have to do none of that. It was in the DNA. My point is, as I matured, I couldn't see it. But when I became a man, it became visible. Hallelujah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? If Christ be in you, as you grow, you may not be able to see it. But when you become a man, it becomes visible. You act like him. You walk like him. You talk like him. Hallelujah. And you don't have a choice. Woo. Oh, I love this. I love this. I love this. Let's stand. But in the natural is sad. Because the part of your daddy you don't want is the part that you normally get. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is that all right? Oh, it's true, folks. It's true. <laughs> oh, it's true. And I, I, I tell you what, I always, I would tell my children, I said, listen, I said, you, you, you can't drink. You know, you, 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 you can't drink. Your system is weak to drinking. I said, my daddy was an alcoholic, and we had a lot of alcoholics in, a, in the line. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So that bloodline, that, 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 that strength, is we don't have a strength there, so you, we can't drink. Because if you do, you'll find yourself an alcoholic before you know it. Right? So I had, I had, of all my children, I had one boy that fell to that disease, and God delivered him. Uh, you know, but one thing he came to me and he said, well, Daddy, you told me. I said, yeah, I tried to tell you. <laughs> you know, you cannot drink. You know what I'm saying? Come on. It's like high blood pressure and all that other stuff. It's hereditary. Then that means you've got to be careful on how you eat. 
Other people can eat whatever they want to, but you can't just eat what you want to. Because if you say, well, brother, I'm saved. <laughs> That's all right. You have to battle that demon. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You have to battle that demon. You can get rid of him. You think he ain't going to stay, he's going to come back. You have to battle that demon till Jesus comes. That don't mean you don't get victory, but he's going to come back because he knows what's in your life. Y'all say, well, well, you can't be saying, I know what I'm talking about because I had to be delivered from that demon. But I thought because I was delivered, I could eat all the fried chicken I wanted to. (laughs) I know you can. (laughs) It'll come back on you because there's a weakness in your genes. Your body ain't redeemed yet. (laughs) It's still backslidden. Y'all know what I'm saying? You love God. Come, brother, as we prepare ourselves. We're going to go into our communion service, and we want to say, everybody, you're welcome to join in with us by the grace of God. Oh, my. I I just feel so good. How many of y'all feel good tonight? I feel real good because, you know, I realize where I'm at. Uh, You know, when you come to a place and you see uh, your failure, you see failure all the time. Somewhere you got to come to reckon something, and that's God, what he's done for you. And you got to reckon that I'm going to move into this. No matter how many times I stumble, no matter how many times I fall, this is my meat, this is my bread, this is my invitation, and I'm going to move into that. This is what God has planned for me. You see, with that attitude, you can't help but to come out every day. We love the Lord.